Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to part nine of the Pro Tools first course. In part eight, we record, you recorded some audio. In part nine, we're going to be editing it. I'm going to show you how to make smooth and professional edits in Pro Tools first. So here we are back in the session we recorded last time. We've got some acoustic guitar and some vocals. I'm going to go over some basics of editing in Pro Tools first. I'm going to show you the main functions and then we're going to move on to have a look at a, a podcast recording where we're going to be looking at some of the more advanced editing functions. It's a really powerful editing tool, Pro Tools. So first things first, we want to cut off the beginning, um, just that little, that little bit of movement there, and we want to fade out the end. So to start off, you want to make sure that you've got the multi-tool selected. It makes editing so much easier. So if you go up here and look at your tools, where you've got the magnifying glass, the pencil, and so on, you've got these three tools here. This one is uh, a grabber it allows you to move your clips this one allows you to select and this one allows you to change uh, change the lengths of clips but you want all of them at once it makes it so much easier rather than having to switch between between the three so if you click on this this border around the top it will select your multi-tool so that when you're hovering over the bottom half of an audio clip you've got the hand so you can drag around with the mouse the top half lets you select and then at the end it will turn into this little bracket here so that you can change the uh, the size, the length of your clips. Now this is all non-destructive. I know some of the more basic editors, if you make a change then make another change, you wouldn't be able to then go back and undo that. You'd have to undo all of the changes but that's the beauty of Pro Tools first. So if you select over any piece of audio and just press the delete key, it's going to delete it, believe it or not. Alternatively, if you click on the audio track and press the B key, it will make a cut in the place. And then you can select that, you can move it somewhere else by dragging, or you can press the delete key. Now, this is a recording of a song. We've got the acoustic guitar bleeding onto that vocal track. So we don't want to be making changes independently of each other. If we make a change on this one, that we don't make on that one, it's going to sound weird. And if you have something like a, a podcast, we've got multiple speakers, you don't want things to start getting out of time. So if we select the first clip, hold the shift key, select the other clip, you want to use use the, uh, the hand for this, then right click either of them um, and or command click on a Mac if you don't have a right click and go down to group. This is going to join these two together. So now any edits we make on one, so if we chop that off, is going to make on the other one too. And if you change your mind after or if you need to go back, you can always right click and ungroup and then they'll be moving independently again. So we've done that now, we've, we've removed the beginning. I'm going to group these back together again for now. So right click and click group. If you make any changes you don't want to keep, you can always press Control Z or Command Z or go into Edit and Undo. So we can undo group clips but we'll keep those groups for now. And then if we move over to the end, just drag that over, or you can hold shift and use the scroll wheel to move. If you hover over, over the end, like we did at the beginning, you can change the length of this. But if we hover over the corner there with that multi-tool selected, we're gonna be getting this little square. And what that does is allow you to fade. So the uh, the volume is going to decrease over time. We don't want that little tap there. So let's bring that in. Another way you can do it is by clicking just before where you want to cut and pressing S and that'll cut everything after it. Or A is the shortcut for cutting everything before your selector. So if we pressed A here it would get rid of all this but we don't want that. So we've gotten rid of that tap. Now we can drag this for a nice smooth fade out and you can also uh, if you move move your move your cursor down at the bottom half of this, you can drag to make a more uh, steep or um, or not so steep curve for the fade. That's quite a fast fade, but we can do a, a longer fade as well. Nice. One thing to point out: if you're having trouble with moving your clips of audio around. Uh, like it's snapping to the grid and you don't want it to, or it's just shooting it back to the beginning of the session every time you click on it, 
just make sure that you're on on the right mode here so we've got slip at the moment which is going to let us move the audio freely if he's on grid it's going to snap it to the grid as you can see it's snapping it to those grid lines um, or if we changed uh, if we change the meter to minutes and seconds it's going to be snapping it to seconds and then the other two I'll go over shortly but um, for, for music you're probably going to want to want things to be on either slip or grid so those are the basic editing functions I'm now going to load up a podcast session and we're going to have a look at some more advanced stuff that you need for repairing things um, repairing vocals fixing timing quickly removing lots of dead air things like that so let's jump into that session now so we've got our podcast loaded up. As you can see, we've got one vocal there. That's the host. We've got a second vocal there, and we've got um, a music intro. So this is going to require more in-depth editing than, than that music did. We want to be cutting out dead air, um, removing little clicks and pops and taps, things like that, and also just getting things into place, adding fades uh, where needed, and, and so on. So before we start editing, I just want to point you to the direction of this little drop down here. This allows you to change how you're viewing the clips um, in your session. So at the moment it's set to waveform, so you're seeing the waveform. And for audio, that's normally what you're going to be wanting for most of the time. But we, we can also change it to these other options here. So if I click on volume, I can see still see the waveform, but also it's showing me the fader there. Um, so you can... So if you click on the pencil, you can make changes to the level on the fly and see how things change uh, over time. So we're going more into that more into detail on that later on, but just to just so you know what that is there. And then we've got other ones like mute. You can see when when your tracks are muted and pan. And then there are a couple of other ones which I won't go into detail just yet. But the first thing we want to do is get this uh, these these vocals out the way of this intro. I'm going to give a little bit of space before the intro there, about a fifth of a second. Let's change it to seconds, minutes and seconds now because we're on a podcast. So I'm going to grab both of these. If you hold the shift key, click on both audio tracks, I'm going to move that um, just as the music starts to fade. So we're going to leave these ungrouped now because we want to be able to edit them independently of each other. For example, on this track here, you've got all these little uh, taps and, and responses that aren't needed. I don't want to leave those in so they'll be edited separately. But the first thing we're going to do is strip silence. It's a really useful editing tool uh, for certain functions. If you want to remove some of this, these spaces, this dead air, um, the quickest way of doing it is by selecting both tracks, going to Edit and clicking Strip Silence. And you can see it's already highlighted all those areas of silence for us. We don't want to get rid of all of them. Um, all the ones that are too short because it, it will sound unnatural. But if we put a little buffer, so this clip, clip start pad and end pad, so it's around a tenth of a second either side. That will allow a tenth of a second silence so it's not sort of gluing the words together. And then we want a minimum duration of half a second. It's only going to be stripping silence that's over half a second. Now we can just press uh, strip. And as you can see, if we zoom in, it's cut those out. Alternatively, you could go for separate, and then it's just going to cut those out for you so you can easily delete them later on, which is what I'm going to do for now. We did mention these editing types earlier, slip, grid, and so on. For a podcast, I want shuffle on, or if you're editing any kind of dialogue, you might want that on too, because if what, what shuffle does is if we delete something, it pulls everything back to fit that space. So if I want to delete a chunk, uh, say one of the speakers has made a mistake, I want to delete it rather than having to delete and then drag, if I put it on slip to show you, if I deleted a section rather than having to then drag that over, um, it just saves time using shuffle because it will it will fill that gap for you. So I'm going to hit play on this now and I'm going to do some edits and I'll explain exactly what I'm doing as I go along. Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Hisham So first things first, I know I don't want all this this stuff here. Harry Thornton, who is the director so I'm going to make a little cut there with B. Solutions. And there are two things we could do here. We could either turn it on to slip. You can press F, F1, F2, F3, F4 to change between these as well to save time. 
um, and then just delete that section so that we don't uh, shift shift everything up. Or alternatively, you could drop this down and then you've got your volume automation. So if you select that clip and pull this down when you've got that little, just hold over it so you've got the little bracket there, pull it right down. That means the volume is at zero on that section. And then you can see there it's at minus infinity. So if we solo that by clicking, clicking the S, can't hear anything, but then obviously once we're out of that range, it's gonna go back up to zero and we'll be able to hear the audio. The only problem with this is, is it that it means you can't then move the fader up and down as you see fit for the whole track because it's, it's now tied to this automation that you've put in. So I'm gonna do it the other way for now, for demonstration purposes. You can do it however, however feels comfortable and whichever's quickest for you. Um, so let's hit play, carry on with where we are. So I'm just gonna delete that for now in slip mode. Or global sales at Aroma Solutions. Harry graduated university in two. So this has already been faded there. Let's move on to. Um, I mean, if I was editing this podcast for real, I'd listen to the entire thing, but I'm going to move on to some other sections so that you can um, see some different types of edits. Stateside as well. So, uh, Harry, welcome to uh, the podcast. Hey, Jim. Thanks for having me. I don't like that little gap there. Let's delete that. It seems like a bit of a pause. I think it's more of a delay on on the, the Zoom call. To uh, the podcast. Hey, Jim, thanks for having Here me. Go. I'm looking forward to it. Likewise. So, same again there. And there's a bit of shuffling. We don't need that that interruption there. Likewise. So, so if I delete all of that, then chop that, and again, back to slip, and just delete that as well. You can even add a little fade just to make sure there's no... Um, there's no clicks or pops. Forward to it. Likewise. So, million pound question is where we like and to again, start. So, I, I want to know. We can be you, making like, these changes while opinion, we're while we're going through um, listening. What character? There's an um there, a vocal crutch. We can delete those if that's something you want to delete in whatever you're editing. So we're going to highlight all of that in shuffle mode. Press delete. Now, what we've got here is a hard cut where we've cut the audio off in the middle of him speaking. Now. It's very quiet, so you probably wouldn't notice it, notice that, but particularly in, in louder sections, if you've got a hard cut there, it's going to make a little click or pop kind of noise. So what you can do, hover over the bottom of that line where you made the cut, so you've got this sort of cross icon, then drag with your mouse, and it's going to make a crossfade, which is fading this clip out and this clip in. So it's going to make a really nice, smooth transition. Opinion. What characteristics and traits do you really it. feel like make up a... We're coming up to these pieces of dead air now as well. And like I said, it does save time when you've used that strip silence tool. What did tool you learn from that out of interest? Because it means that we can just highlight that and delete it without right. having what, to... What did you take from that? Uh, without it's having just like to drag anything, over right? it. So those are the main functions that you're going to be using to edit in Pro Tools first. I'm going to show you a couple more tips that might be useful to you in your editing. The first one, if you want to join up all these cuts that you've made, um, so you can export the track at the end, which we'll be talking about. But if you want to, say, apply an effect to uh, the whole of one track and you've got it all in these little sections, you just want to glue it all back together again, but retain those edits you've made. If you hold the shift key and click on the first clip that you want to join up and then click on the last clip you want to join up, so it's selecting all of them. If you then go to edit and click on consolidate clip or alt shift three, is the shortcut. It's going to glue that back together. So you've you've saved the edits in there now. All those edits will be incorporated into that clip and it's also saved it as a new file, a new audio file. Now if you're not sure if you want to keep this, you think you might want to go back to those edits, I recommend right clicking on the track there and clicking duplicate. Uh, it's going to keep all that, all that data in there. It's going to make a, a perfect duplication and you can always then mute that, hide it, right click on right click on the, the track and hide it or hide and make inactive um, if you don't want to be hearing it or you don't want it to be uh, using up your system resources, you can make it inactive. We can hide that and that's still there in your track so you can always unhide it but now you could then consolidate and you can also go back 
to that hidden one if you change your mind. And then also just to point out, most of these functions that I've mentioned, I mentioned a few different ways of using shortcuts like A and, and S um, to cut the beginning and ends off of, off of clips. If you go into edit, pretty much all of these functions you'll find in here as well. So if you do forget the shortcuts, um, then just go to the edit window and look, you've got trim clip and separate clip. You've got all these functions here. And then one last editing trick I want to show you. If you want to separate all this up into individual words, or it, well, it's probably more useful for music if you've got, say, drums, for example, and you want to set, separate them all up easily. If you highlight it and just click on that clip and go to edit and go to separate clip, you can then separate it on the grid. So it's going to make, make cuts on every single second or every beat depending on whether you've got it set to beats and bars or minutes and seconds, or we can do it at transients, which means it's going to be making a cut for you at the beginning of each transient. And then you might want to add a few milliseconds before it so it doesn't cut off the beginning. So 10 milliseconds and click OK. And there you go. It's cut everything up. So yeah, if you wanted to fix the timing of something or move things around or save things as individual words, if you're recording a voiceover, something like that, then that could be very useful too. Now you know how to edit in Pro Tools first while keeping it sounding natural and professional. Let me know in the comment section below what you've been editing. Podcast, music, it'd be great to hear what projects you're working on. And in the next part, we're going to be going over how to use MIDI in Pro Tools first. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next part. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part 10.